Today's Captain's Vlog is brought to you by Frank Lawler. Good morning campers and welcome live. It is 10.33 hours on Friday, January 1st, 2016. Tyler and Batman are here cleaning out some of the old ducting because the new heaters are working and the HVAC guys are going to come and install some new ducting. And it's really dumb to pay guys a lot of money to take out old ducting. We can do that. We're really good at breaking shit. So. The morning begins with ripping this out. It's knacky, Tyler. Once you get like five of them, you'll, you'll get it. Hey, down, 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 all the way down. See this, where you were standing? See that sticker right there that says don't stand on or above this stuff because you'll fall and break your ass. If you need to be up that high, get a bigger leg. But you can't, you can stand here but if your knees, if you can't touch this with like your shins, then just back. Okay? Knees are usually my limit. You can stand here all day. It's totally cool. Then stand here. Okay. I think you guys want a cold chisel. Oh, well, find a find a shitty chisel or something to wedge in there. Man. Poor abused dog. So hard being her. She's a little drunk on the bus. Yeah. Okay. We got new bumps. Oh. So they're just having the best day ever. Yep. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. You're back, rocking out. Are you proofing? I got my red pad. Oh well, see, for serious proofreading. And it's Jerry's birthday. Everybody, comment with happy birthday, Jerry. He turns 17 today. We're very proud. It's worse than that. What? 24. 24. Nothing good happens at 24. One more year and your car insurance goes down. You got that. Huh? It's two? Oh, it used to be at 25, your insurance goes down a bit. Yeah, but then the whole stop care. You're under your parents' insurance till you're 26. No, that's health insurance. Car insurance drops when you're 25. My mom called our car insurance people yesterday. So. But it's your birthday, so we will be tormenting you today. Okay. All day. So it's going to be the day. <laughs> no, more than your usual level of torment. See, the cool thing is tomorrow Ken Wolf is going to comment, along with like five other guys, with the exact perfect tool and technique that you should have been using to do this, and it'll be totally useless because we'll be done by then. All right, Ken, you can do it. I know you can do it. But it'll be useful to learn for the next time, and we'll have notes to be able to go back and be able to do it better in the future. So thank you, Ken, for empowering us for a brighter day. <sighs> so blog hasn't gone public yet from yesterday. It's uploading. In fact, it's uploaded. It's processing now. And you guys will all be freaking out on the internet in a little bit because we had first light yesterday with the shittiest, littlest, ugliest Tesla coil ever. Um, also, he wandered off before I could get him in the group shop, but KC did a hell of a lot on this, and I really want to make that known. KC did the, uh, all the machining on this, and he did a really amazing job, and I'm very proud of him. And yeah, but he had wandered off before the final shot, so. Um, but I'm going to get this tweaked up a bit. I've got to find out what's wrong here. I think we might have pooched that, or it's just the very act being shit. I don't know. Yeah, it's not popped out, so. See if it works. It might just magically spring to life, who knows. Oh, I got power up there now. Oh, 
Oh, kid will be happy we didn't kill his transformer. It's just a thermal thing here. So I got to, uh, I got to rig up a bigger, a bigger, better, better 120 volt variac, but I can do that. So nice to be able to make arcs and sparks again. Oh God, you don't know how much I've missed this. It's been a damn long time. So I gotta figure out 120 volt variac, which is actually kind of hard. I'm tits deep in 240 and 480 volt variac. So 120, it's harder to come by, but I'm sure I got something. And really, if I can rig up a 10 amp variac would be enough because you can overload them pretty substantially for short periods of time. Um, 10 amp would be enough. I'd like to do a 20. If I can find a 20 amp, 120 volt variac, which is not here because I cleaned the damn shelves and everything moved downstairs. But there's like this little toy. That's what is that? How big? That's 240. Um, so. Ah. Now you can run a 240 volt variac at 120 volts. You run 480 volt variac. There's really no reason you can't, is it? I don't know. You might lose something. You're always going to lose some. There's some damn trade-off somewhere that I'm not thinking of at the moment, but off the top of my head, I can't think of any reason why. But it doesn't really matter. No, it does for that one. I got to have a little variac for that. Oh, shit. All right. So follow along. Don't be stuck. It'll be fun. I'll be back. NPR and paper slicer time. NPR and paper slicer time. Yeah. Well, that's a good system. So you're doing you're doing the final trimming. I the other night was going to go on a date. And the guy called me for us to meet up, and he asked me what I was doing, and I said I was sitting in my car listening to NPR, because it was a fascinating link report on genetics. Okay. He said he thought it was stupid. He didn't get no a date, date that night, yeah. <laughs> well played. He was like, well, that sounds dumb. And I was like, well, I have to go home and, like... Do other shit now. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Oh, I'm gonna go fuck your best friend now. Yeah, <laughs> I have better name? plans. Yeah. I have better plans. What are you doing? Go home and doing nothing. <laughs> go finish the thing on genetics. So we're we're printing out the case for support, yep. which is public now. Fire and trim. Yes, because they're uniquely sized, and this we'll talk about this in the car. Okay. We'll we'll tell people what it is and where they can find it. All right, is everybody ready? Did everybody pee? <laughs> I'll be back. Okay. Batman got the duck out with Tyler's help. What are you two tackling next? I'm gonna be gone for like an hour. So. Okay, we'll figure something out to do. All right. It's gonna take us to get this all clean. All right, see if we can get that cleaned a bit. That might not be dirt, that might be lack of paint. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's fine. Okay. Jerry doesn't know where we're going. Oh, we haven't told him? It's a surprise. Oh, okay. It's a surprise. Are you surprised? I'm feeling surprised. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm well, surprised. at least it's just let herself, let herself out. out. That's fine. Mandy! <laughs> Lisa's let herself back in! Oh, come on! <laughs> Is Mackie down here? She come on, girls! I'll be back. Alright, so who are you going to point that at? You or me? I don't know, you were the one who had an idea. Well, I wanted to tell people about the case for support thing. Okay. It's a whole thing. It's it's a big deal. It's You've worked on this for like weeks, so you should you should hold that out. Hold it out. You need a little mount over here. Yeah, I'll get right on there. Well, the case for support is something that you send an organization to introduce them to the concept of why you're worthy of being supported. Okay. So the idea is not that. Hey, fuckhead. God, yeah, it's yeah. not like the roads are wet or anything. Here, how about I'll back up and you can you can come back from not being in the middle of the intersection, or you can just stay there. Yeah, okay. So the idea is that um, you don't offer specifics as to like which program you're seeking funding for or how many dollars, but this is a a universal introduction to why we exist, what what the need is, and how we fulfill that need. Okay, so it's it's not an ask, it's no. not a letter of inquiry, it's this is why we exist. We're awesome and you should help us out. 
Well, it's a little bit more than just we're awesome. It's we're awesome because this problem exists in the world and we're fixing it. Okay. Um, in the past, we have always done the we're awesome part. We tell people what we do and how we okay. do it, but we have not put together a document that specifically talks about why the Geek Group exists. Okay. Which turns out was a difficult question to answer. The first time. Yeah, it's. It took me probably the first 15 years to be able to concisely say, this is what we do. Because it's easy to say, this is what we do across 50 pages. It's right. really hard to do it in anything short enough that people are actually going to take the time to read. And our case for support is eight pages, including the cover and the back cover. Okay. Um, that is very short. If you read it, you will see that it's not like eight wall of pages that are all wall text. Yeah. There, there's actually not a lot of text. In. But there are quite a few pictures yeah. that, that support the text, which is kind of a standard practice. Mm -hmm. It's a nice, like, sexy, professionally produced thing. And the uh, intent is that this is something that, you know, you send a packet to the foundation and one person reads the letter of inquiry and they're not the decision maker. Yeah. They need to get past the next step. So they hand this to the person who makes that next decision. Okay. And that person reads it and says yay or nay, and then it moves on to the people who decide to follow it. Okay. This is what you use to get through the wall. It makes sense. And I certainly support the idea. Because if, if you don't get that far, and if you don't have something that articulates your position, you're trusting on somebody who doesn't really care about us to articulate that position to somebody who can make the decision. Right. Which puts you in the really shitty place of violating my fundamental rule of fundraising, which is don't accept a no from somebody who can't tell you yes. And you end up doing that when you have to have this articulated by you know, Jan the receptionist, who just happens to be the girl who opens the mail, and she walks into her boss's office and says, hey, I got this thing from the geek group. Are you, are you interested in that? And he's like, nah, fuck it, I don't know who the hell they are. And you just end up screwing yourself. And this, this is exactly for that, so that when she opens the mail, she has something that she can put in his hands. Yeah. And the intent was to make it easy to process so that with your own words, you can also convey what we do and why we do it. Yeah. I, I like it. I like it a lot. Well, thank you. I also like the fact that we do better graphic design and publishing than most professional graphic design houses that I've gotten to deal with in regards to this realm. So you know what I learned that was really disappointing? What? I, in the past two or three weeks, I did a lot of research on uh, non-profit advertising and marketing. Okay. Because... The case for support is not advertising, but I need to make sure that everything ties together. Yeah, yeah, we've got to have a unified appeal. So, I saw quite a few lists online of like the year's best nonprofit ads. Okay. And one stuck out to me. It was a television spot for the Mayo Clinic. Okay. It was good. It's the Mayo Clinic, they have a big budget. Well, that's the thing. They said part of the reason why this ad was so outstanding is it was the only ad on the entire page that was made in-house. Really? Yes. And that, that makes sense because when you do it yourself, you care about it more. And you could tell. Yeah. But I found it disappointing that it was a thing of note. They did this themselves. Yeah. We should put that on all of our stuff, like the... All the corporate documents that we produce that, that are high-level stuff, that there should be a little thing in there saying, this was created entirely in-house at the Geek Group using only our facilities. Yeah, we could do that. That's a good idea. But it just has become so commonplace that you farm all that out. Yeah. And I hate that. I hate, I hate consultants. I hate... Oh, we'll hire a fundraising consultant. We'll hire a marketing consultant. We'll, we'll piss away $50,000 so somebody who 
they'll tell us 90% of what we already know already, and the other 10%, they'll just tell us shit that we probably won't actually do. We should, but we won't. And they don't want to actually do anything. So instead of hiring somebody to do the thing, like we create a job and hire somebody to come in here, work for us, doing this thing in our building, we're pissing away piles of money to somebody else who doesn't actually do anything. Just tell us what we should have done. If I want people to tell us what we should have done, I'll post a video on fucking YouTube and have 50 people line up telling me what we should have done. That's free. As is my opinion. But, but no, I, I might be kind of bitter. A little? A little bit. I fucking hate consultants, man. I have found that an effective tactic so far has been to take the things that we've been working on and send it to the people that I know that do marketing and design for a living that are in a completely different world and just say, what's terrible here? <laughs> and they take five minutes, look at it and go, oh, don't do that. That's that bad. Take it back and go, okay, okay. I won't do that. Okay. I don't need them to create the whole thing. Yeah. Just a just, little feedback. That is, makes sense. It's handy. A little bit of outside perspective. Oh, we left like 30 full seconds before they did. We did. Okay. Because I just, I looked at her, I said, they're not, they're not. He was uh, cleaning his car off. Uh, it had snowed. It's apparently winter now. It, it is. Take a look. Show, show them what this is. Michigan in legit winter. There is snow on the ground. Oh, hey. What? We're coming up on my favorite part of the city. We are? We are. Oh, okay. My running boundary. Oh, you gotta tell people the story behind it. Well, this is uh, coming up on the, the tip of Millennium Park. And most of the races that are of substantial size in Grand Rapids go on this course. And in a moment, we will pass the turnaround point on all of them. Yeah, it's down there on that little road down there. They can see it now. Well, this is the... That's not it. That's not it? <laughs> not even oh. close. That's where you wish it was. Oh. But I always look at that sign. It says Granville Walker left one mile. Okay. I know that sign really well. It's usually when I'm hating things. So how far out is this on most of the courses? It varies quite a bit, doesn't it? Um, yeah, if you drive from downtown, this is about eight and a half miles. Okay. Because, you know, you have to turn around. Yeah. sign is the turnaround point for the marathon right. right there. I have not run past you. Now we're in car territory. That's still a hell of a hike. I, I wouldn't want to have to walk that much less do it on a run. I might I might think your old marathon thing is a little bit like daddy, but that's just me. Let's guess it is. I have no desire to ever do that to myself. I've yeah. done some really stupid things to my body, especially in the name of like either sport, recreation, or science. But let's go run 26.2 miles just for fun. Just if we do it, they give us a medal. No. I no. Because no. I've seen what everybody looks like at the end of that, and I'm just like, no, nah, that's not that's not my idea of a good time. 
having done, even if it means you have to do it. I appreciate that. I mean, you've seen my job. I ran my kid today. And just for, for kids. Just, I'm going to go run 5K. 3.1 miles. 3.11. 3.11 miles. You get off on this one, right? Yes. Okay. I don't come out here often, so I don't know. It's going to a mall, and that's just going to... You can see the, the fake tree. Yeah. That, that perfectly regular pine tree over there is actually a um, cellular tower. It's kind of cool. Because we totally have pine trees that are 50 feet tall. We do. Not in the city, but, you no, know. Not in the Lowe's parking lot? Could happen. I gotta, I gotta thank a couple hundred thousand people a year drive right past that thing and never notice it for what it is. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Which is rather the point. I mean, it does its job. You should show people the, the tree. The one lone tree. It isn't. And that isn't like they they put a cell antenna on a tree. The whole thing is fake. It looks really fake if you stand under it. Yeah. I've never been that close to it. Still yellow? Thing. Yeah, making up for the other one where the lady decided to fully stop halfway into a yellow light. Just like, no, God, panic stop, fuck! It's okay, because she did it in the middle of the intersection, so that makes it totally exciting. Ooh, substation. That's one of my measurements of success. What? When we have a facility so big that it justifies its own substation, no matter how small, it can be a little baby substation. Of any size. Wow, this guy is like high or something. I don't know what's going on. You gotta tell me where I'm going. Am I uh, going here? No. I'm not going here? Well, you're not turning there. Okay. Where am I turning? The next one. Okay. I didn't know if that was like a need to know thing or. <laughs> I'll let you know when it's. Now! Okay. Yeah, that's where... That's the, first, the first available turn at this point. Okay. You turn right. Okay. Come on then. Okay. We're going to get Jerry a, a Christmas present. He doesn't know this. He has no idea. Turn right. Okay. Shut, shut that way. I'm bored. Do I need to provide further instruction? Uh, there's a big sign there says Dicks. I'm guessing that's where I'm going? Yes. Okay. Then I got this. Okay. Cool. I've been here before. This is where Moose comes to get her shoes. Because Moose has very specific requirements in shoes. Okay. She only buys from the Elton John line. Really? You buy some damn tacky shoes. That's all I'm saying. Where do I want to go? I'm going to go... I'm going to go this way. Well, it's not like running is a fashion quest. I don't have to match my shoes to anything. Yeah, but not many people go out of their way to make them as just... Oh my god loud as possible. And you, you wear some damn loud shoes. Hey, they come in orange. <laughs> But you got so preoccupied with whether or not you could that you failed to think about whether or not you should. Oh, there's a car in there. It's just a tiny bit. Oh, hey, you're moving. Cool. Come on. Get that minivan out of there. I'll wait for you. It's cool. Right on out. Just come right on out there. I'll just slip right in. Come on. Don't be scared of it. I mean, you'd have a better argument today if I were wearing my Campbell's soup shoes, but I'm not. You're not going to do that in one. You're going to have to back up and do it again. There you go. See? 
Hey, Jerry's here. If I ever achieve a point in my life where buying a minivan just starts to sound like a good idea, I want you to beat me to death with a shovel, please. Okay? And I've said that on video. It's on the internet. It's public knowledge. If I ever get to a point in my life where buying a minivan is a good idea. A shovel. Shovel. Beat shovel. me to death with a shovel. Okay. Do you have a preference on shovels? Not really. Not, not that picky. Shovel. That's... Ah. All right, kids. I'll be back. I gotta go. I gotta go help Jerry with dicks. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> time is 15.56 hours, and Katie's gonna hold this while we take notes. So we have, this is a very act we just dug out downstairs. It turns out the thing that we screwed up last night was uh, we overdrove that crappy little toy very act. So we found this one downstairs, 20 amps, and it's unfused. So it's just raw surging power. Um, now across the input, we have line voltage at 120.2 volts AC. So I'll put this on the output, and we'll go all the way down. So, at zero, we have 0.822 volts. At 10%, we have 15.4. We want to watch that. That's what you're looking mm -hmm. at. Okay. I'm looking at 20%, at we have 29.3. At 30%, we have 43. 40%, we have 57. At 50%, we have 72.5. At 60%, we have 87.2. At 70%, we have 101. At 80%, there, we have 115.7. Now, this should be our unity mark, which it is. We're 122 volts. Um, and then we can overdrive at 90%, we have 129. At 100% scale, we have 143.3 volts AC. So, we're good there. That's our input power measurement for this variant. And now you know it home. Sup, G? Hi. <laughs> so, the thing to remember on this variac is as long as it's plugged in, these contacts are hot and dangerous. So it's something just to keep in mind when working around it. But really, if you can't handle that, you shouldn't be in this room anyway, so. We're cool there, and... Now Batman's going to lift a heavy thing. So, get that, it'll be thrilling. I'm going to figure out how to mount this. Do you need, do you need a helper? I don't know. Here and just zip screw them down. Uh -huh. And then let's put a 
couple of clamps to hold the cord down to the thing. And then we got a little power cart, which is quite lovely. I haven't thought about it. Mm -hmm. you ever thought? I think I know your thought. This box. Mm -hmm. Could enclose it. Mm -hmm. That really sucks. Sure would. Well, we could take the top off and just crank it right into it. We could. But you know what we do first? Mm -hmm. We super clean this. Paint it. Paint red, of course. Because high voltage. We got a little project here. We got any red spray paint? <coughs> All right, find me uh, three, two or three cans of red spray paint. Yeah. All right, cool. Katie, <laughs> pull this up. It's our next thing. <laughs> There's the before. We'll be back. All right, so time is 16, 17 hours. We've got it stripped down, took top off, took the mounts out. And I'm going to show you guys just how fast we can turn this into like awesomeness. So time now is 16, 17 hours. Uh, this is covered in like 20 years of schmoo. So I don't know where we got it from. I don't know what its former life was. But the first thing you need to do is get it clean. So the easiest way to do that, since we're going to paint it, is we want to scuff sand it anyway. And instead of wasting a ton of time cleaning this off,
Obligatory warning, don't breathe this, but I'm doing this next to a giant downdraft from the unelected heat, so it'll be alright. <laughs>
little bit of acetone, it makes your hands feel cold and tingly. You do a little more acetone, it makes your brain feel cold and tingly. shirt and my watch and set them over here because I know. you'll see a black spot. Point the nozzle towards the black spot. The black spot inside is there's a little tube that goes down and angles to one edge and the black spot is where the tube is. So when you're holding the can like this, that's where you want to suck from because if you're back here you can have a puddle. You can have that much paint in the bottom of there and not be able to use it. So point it at the black dot.
This is hard.
Just hanging out, hanging your chest. Face for the foil? Huh? Face for the foil? Uh, it might be a foil base, probably going to be a power supply. This way, if we don't have it fully enclosed, it doesn't look weird. Right. We've never done that before. Painted enough. Certainly not my best work, but for quick and dirty making red, red, and paint danger. Good. Alright. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Like, I didn't know that was at the top. <laughs> yeah, but if you don't paint now, you're never going to paint. 
extraneous crap from this. Uh, we've got uh, one of them. Okay, grab the blue dikes. So this was a heater. So we've got a multi-position switch here and a continuously variable there. So this is a thermostat. You can tell. This is fan speed, and uh, this is a danger, danger overcurrent rig. And what we want is that. So we're going to, why does that just jump across? Oh, I know why, okay. That, I'll bet they're broken, yeah, they're broken on the other side too, okay. So we've got two windings here. Let's start by cleaning this up. We don't need this wire or this wire. These, these are the fan wires. Don't, don't need any of that crap. We need, that's our thermostat, so this. three wires here, here, and those three wires go, one goes into the coil, which is bridged on this side. That might be my coil. No, that's the coil. So the coil's bridged on this side. You can see a wire that goes, oh, here, what's, Batman, give me a long skinny straight blade, please. Hey, yeah? Dogs come in here, they die! They die! Hi, Max. Okay, so we got rid of the fan motor, and now we have a wire that goes in here, and a wire that comes out here, and the two sides are joined together, and what it does is these are just wired in parallel. So that's kind of cool. And what, I need the strippers, please. And a nut driver that is probably 7 sixteenths, it might be a size, it looks a size smaller than that. One size down from 7 sixteenths. What's that? Big beefy coils. And 
Now we don't need this at all, which is the sensor for the thermostat. It's a nice little thermostat. Let's take that right out. Thermostat. Stick that up your butt. Let me know when it goes. Okay. Alright. Try that one. Too big. Oh. Too big? Too big. Okay. I'm going to try now. Too small. Damn it. This is strippers. That's 716. That's way too big. So you need one of the Okay. So, all together, with both Thirteen point seven ohms. It's not in parallel. At what? Two amps? Before it makes up. What's thirteen point seven ohms at two forty? Where's the clamp on amp meter? That's the one I've been looking for. I can't find it. Last I saw that one's in it. electronics. Want it's in electronics. electronics. Can you go get it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. We had it we'll be back. Yeah, well, real quick. Yeah. Just a quick and dirty test. We'll just wire nut it up. See what we get. Um. Let's measure our current with those first and see where we're at there. Mm -hmm. And then we'll try it with this because this gives us inductive limiting, which is better, it's more efficient. Um, we're going to need a hot stick on there. I'm going to try this with. Uh, Two of these, and then one of these. We should short the high voltage on these to ground, or just remove it. Either one would be fine. Uh, it's a pain in the ass to dean up one of these. I need. We'll try these open and see what our current is on here. And then we'll try them closed, see where we end up. But figure a microwave. These don't say how many watts. Oh, probably a thousand watts. Gal 1000U, they're probably a thousand watts each. Which would be really nice. And if they're a thousand watts each, then I'm a happy guy and we'll just stay with these for now. Okay. Ah, don't touch these. This here gets really high voltage. Um, ah, Batman, we need to... I need a pair of quarter 20 volts. Just little short ones. And I will take a piece of scrap wire that we just made over here. We'll do great. Got a couple 
short quarter twenties. Half inch is going to be perfect. You don't have anything just laying around? All the shit you got to do with your quarter twenties? Really? Twenty different kinds of shit in this room all needs to be put away. Yeah, I want to bolt that in or I'll bugger up those slots. Look at that. It's beautiful. Such luster in the machine. Someday I want to grow up and be as cool as I am. It's my ultimate dream. What you got? Oh, those are way more better. All right, grab me a big Phillips head. So we're load testing this transformer, so the best thing to do is just put a dead short right across the output side. I want to draw as much current as I can on the primary side. They're for the high voltage lab. This is one of the crappier ways to make a connection, but it's really just wasteful to just put ring terminals on this. So you put the wire under the thing and make sure when you put the wire under the thing, if it's a standard bolt, that you go around in the direction that you're tightening. So as you tighten, it wraps the wire. Yeah, it'll smush down a little bit and stick out, which is great. You want nice little pokey bits when you've got 13,000 volts. Um, we'll get some little hissing off this, but not a lot because it's only 13,000 volts, which sounds like a lot, but 13 kilovolts is actually pretty low. Um, all right, so we've got secondary shorted. Primary is connected through to, ostensibly, 1,000 watt microwave oven transformers. We've got the meter set to amps. We've got power coming to the box. So we're going to just put the box in and we're going to go. This moose is about to interrupt us. What you got? This is good. across X countries get an accurate count. Okay. This is this is sexy. Thank you. Do it. Do it all the time. Set up a thousand. Matrix? Yes, I know. Tell me your money. No, she, yeah, she's she's bringing stuff in. Okay. Would you like to see it? I know what it is. I've already seen it. It's right. three penny cut insulators, right? So we're probably she about like see it. I would like to see it. Bring them into here. This, right. is, this is the high voltage lab where many put insulators go. This is not a major complication. Here, we'll do this. Okay. 
Katie, read the meter. Tell me what we go up to. Back end, watch the other side of that transformer. Make sure no magic smoke comes out. You ready? What do you got there? 0.45. Huh? Point, uh, 0.45. 4.5? Let's see what that really says. That says 0.45. Uh, 0.45 amps. That's really low. Points. Uh, it's moving around a lot. What do you got there? 2.21. 2.21 amps? Yes. We need more amps. Alright, unplug in for safety. Unplug in for safety. Unplug for safety. Cool. Alright, I'm going to change some things around, then we'll shoot the next bit. Oh, well, sure. Um, this is Janet, who just brought in a donation. Now, these are called penny clips. And you have frequently seen them looking like that up there. That's a whole string of petticoats. Um, these are used as suspension insulators. You, you, this hangs from a cross arm or whatever. And then whatever you want to insulate hangs from below here. Now, these are missing the hanger part, but we have those. What these are is they're kind of delicate because they're made of ceramic, which is impressive because you can you could hang your car from one of these, no problem. But if you look at them, the numbers tell us that these are made by Pinco. They were made in 1952, and they are each rated to 10,000 volts. Actually, that looks looks like a 15, maybe 16. I don't know. It was made in 52, and it's been out in the weather for a while. But they shape them like this for a very specific reason. Because, here, you're my, you're my cross arm. Hang on. Don't drop it. So they shape them like this, and on the bottom, they're ribbed. And the idea is, when it rains, the water comes off like that, and the top is smooth to get rid of the water. The bottom is ripply. Just hold it like that. Drag it through. The bottom is ripply so that these, this distance, it's the distance along the insulator. Because when these, when these fail, they arc, they, they don't blast through, they travel, you'll see an arc travel along the outside. And this increases that distance. It has the effect of making it larger in diameter. And by having the shape like this, these want to drip off. So like if you have a fog where everything gets wet, the fog will drip off these. So that's why they're shaped like that. They're actually in really great shape. They're very nice. And to give you an idea, this insulator here is rated for 14,000 pounds. So your daily driver probably weighs around three or 4,000 pounds. So yeah, cool. they're, they're nice. This is cool. We will actually use these. I took a bunch of them and put them all together up there. So there's seven in a row, and we use that. That'll stand off 100,000 volts. And we, we play with big bolts. So I promise if you brought this over, I'd show you a little baby lightning. You want to see a little weekly baby lightning? Okay.
this little variant is rated for like, I don't know, 5 amps, I think. It's a toy. And yeah, this is rated for 5 amps. And we're drawing more than 5 amps. So this works for a few seconds, and then it's a little thermal circuit breaker that craps out. So today, we started working on that variac over there, which is rated for 20 amps. And it will be up and running with Kindle or something today, but they're not. So tomorrow we'll get a nice, sexy plug and socket set up. We'll hook that up, and then that thing will choo right along. It'll be pretty cool. Yeah, it's getting there. It's cool. But right now, we're tinkering with this, because I could hook that up to that, and it would work appreciably better, but we have to current limit it. So we're trying to get as close to 20 amps through it as we can without going over. We're playing electrical blackjack, and right now we're drawing two amps, which is puss ass, so we gotta do better. We'll be back in a minute. All right, so we got four and a half amps with that system at max power, which is nowhere near what I want. So, I'll take this off of here. I don't see. Maybe? Maybe that's it. Maybe that'll do it. Chanted up with an e cig. She smokes. Not anymore. Get it? Oh. Thinking out of this, we can probably get substantially more power than through those things. I don't know. Hey, Batman. Make a connection from here to the case. Okay? Put a little bolt through here and just put a slip on thing, just a short piece of wire over the crick fitting, and put a little bolt through down the bottom, connect them to the case.
Hey, Batman, where'd you put those wire nuts you had? Oh, they're right here. Never mind. Wow, these are, these are terrible wire nuts. The nuts in the thing are not the nuts on the thing. We need to get some nice, high quality, good pan wire nuts. It's actually a very nice wire. You happy with that? Yeah, that's exactly what we need. Now do it on your own. Hi. Take your pictures of me. I was not. Should I? Huh? Should I? You should always be taking pictures of me, but I'd prefer if you didn't. It steals your soul. Uh, all right. Let's try this and see what we get. Now this is with just one in series on each leg into the transformer. Yeah, that should be all right. All right, let's see what we get for amps. Watch that, Batman, it'll be fun. Let's see what we Glow chair red. Everything clear or not? Yeah, probably glow chair. Yeah, we're clear. I'm seeing 10 amps. That's what I was saying. What you got? Yeah. 3.60. Amps? Yes. That seems low. No, it's 5. Hmm. Hmm. This is the trivia question? Yes. Is there more to this? Is there any context? It's a question, just... but they have to know the places. Okay, what's the question? What, is, what do these places have in common? All right, so today's blog trivia question. Here, I'll let you do it. If, if you want, if you want me to read it, I will. But... Cook Islands. You got to do it way louder than that. They got to hear you. Cook Islands. Now we. Abkhazia, Vatican City, Tonga, Turkmenistan, Tuvalu, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Samoa, San Marino, Sierra Leone, Solomon Islands, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, Palau, Nauru, Liechtenstein, Marshall Islands, North Korea, Kiribati, Liberia, Guinea-Bissau, East Timor, Equatorial Guinea, Eritrea, Comoros, Republic of the Congo, Democratic Republic of the Congo, 
Cyprus. That's a funny term for that part of the world. North Cyprus, Central African Republic, Chad, Benin, Bhutan, Burkina Faso, and Andorra. All have something in common. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's my doo-wop cover band. <laughs> If that isn't a band name somewhere, I'm really, really disappointed because St. Vincent and the Grenadines, that just, it sounds like a band name. Have fun with your engineering. What? I'm just thinking, you, nothing, nothing. <laughs> I think I've got Batman's project here because we can't even identify them. But I'm guessing it's X1, X2, X3, X4. Or, no, X1, X2, X3, X4. Well, that says X1. So this is X1. And that's X3. That's X2. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. That's definitely X1. That's definitely X... Why would you have one, then three? All right, so we gotta put power in X1 and four. So here and here, and then neutral there. So Batman, I need a, I need a new bar here. Can you make that happen, please? Because this one's pretty pooched. And in the meantime, we can just put some big rig terminals on and hook that up. Like, is that we need this. This is old masonite, and it's pretty pooched. But all the hardware is intact and good, um, and the hole spacing isn't critical except the middle two. But yeah, we just got to make a new piece. And actually, Batman, it's a simple plate. Uh, give me a wrench if it's it. So we get to rebuild a transformer a little bit here. God, I'm dumb. I feel so stupid right now. Like, like I feel impressively stupid. Even for me. So those don't go there.
Okay, so it's H1 and H2 is H1 and H2. And then 1, 2, 3, 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4. Wow, that's weird. That's got to be some instrumentation shit for like fine adjustments or something. I don't know. I'm kind of curious. This is kind of an interesting transformer now. So, Batman, I'm going to need you to make me a plate, please. i got to take all this out. I'm going to need a... Does, does it have to have I need, I need a wrench this size, huh? Like which size? Uh, the big the ones. Both for the terminals. Because yeah, i got to take those out before I take the thing out. Mm -hmm. So... And I need another 9 sixteenths wrench, please. We'll, we'll be back. Wait. Hmm. Wait. Wait. Go get labels. Go get a roll of masking tape, if nothing else. But we have to label those wires before we take everything apart. Because, <coughs> wow, will we regret that. So we know that's X1. This is I'm gonna say three, because that can't be a two. It looks like three. Yeah, it's that's X1, three. And the other two aren't even they don't, Oh no, it's hidden. It's hidden behind. This is four, two, three, one. So one, two, three, four is the order, okay? One, two, three, four. You can see an X4 back here, and you can see a two back here, and then one there, so we know that's three for sure. They're just out of order. So they go into the transformer, one's on top, and then three, and then two, and then four, and that's the order they come out of the transformers. One, three, two, four. And we're sure, because we can see this goes over here to X1, this goes over here to X3, this goes over here, back there you can see a two, so that's a two, and then the bottom one comes out to X4. Power goes in on one and four, two and three are tied, and that's our neutral reference. <laughs> and knowing that, we don't have to label them until Batman. Hey, Batman! Hey, Batman, we don't have to label it. You can come back. We're okay. Hi. Hi. Have you come once again to interrupt my blog? Yes. I just need to tell you that I'm going home. Huh? I just came to tell you that I'm going home. Oh, okay. You have fun. I'll see you tomorrow. You have radio with me. I won't, I won't radio you. Are you running tomorrow? Yes. How far? 10K. 10K tomorrow? Outside. Outside? Well, aren't you one of the cool kids? First Saturday of the month. What's that mean? The Riverbank Run is a free training run. Yeah? On the Riverbank Run course. I'm going to run on Butterworth. Butterworth's a nice street. Sure, in a car. <laughs> This would be a really cool to Yeah, that's what you want. Hey, Moose? Yeah? I need, say, I don't know, two or three grand to fund a for real toolbox and for real basic tools for this room only. Like, we need a high voltage toolbox. Because we have the jank shelf, but we need, we need big boy tools in here. All right, Batman, take it apart. I'm working on that. 
Okay, I'm just letting you know, put that, that on a list somewhere. Because, man, what I could do is get proper tools. Oh, I know. I, I know we're not unique in here. But this is the lab that does the coolest stuff. So This was my Christmas present. You know, they got brass nuts on steel bolts. Really, you should only have to make a rectangle with six holes in it. And it can be made out of like HDPE if you want it. It can't be black plastic. But you can totally use one of those straps. I wouldn't do it at a UHMW because it isn't physically very strong, but HDPE would be fine. Let's put it back. They did that one out of a piece of phenolic resin, but I don't think we have any phenolic resin that thin. Because that's like, what? Three eighths? Quarter? That's quarter. That's, that's, yeah, a, that's, that's a steel that's, plate, though, right. so it should have, it should have hold right. They're not on very tight. This makes me, makes me feel dirty doing it like that. hardware separate from all the others as it comes off. It's kind of obvious the difference. Yeah, but just trust me on that. <laughs> that nut went with it? It had a lock nut on the back? Batman? Hmm? This extra nut goes with it, it'll lock nut. 
Because you just gave me two nuts. Yeah, there should be another bolt. Oh, oh. one over here. Yeah. And it's washer. There you go. Okay. There's a lot. All right. Can you use that one to get measurements to make a new one? Out of just HDPE. So once we have that, we can put the wires back in, and then the transformer will work. And it'll draw more than three amps. <laughs> Something like that! that? Those numbers don't line up right. <laughs> I do my math wrong. Chris Bowden, can I help you? Hey, alright, so this is what you need to do. Walk over to your stove. Okay, uh, and you have a gas stove for sure, right? Okay. okay the spacing's the same. <laughs> oh, you totally can light yourself. The, the, does it tick when you turn it on? No. Like, like when you. Casey into doing this for us. Casey's not over no, there. He's not even there. I thought he was over there. So, no. something neat.
Hi, Mom. Hey. How was the drive? So it wandered on me. Wandered on me a lot. I see that.
Lock that thing is in. Right. <coughs> I don't know if 
we have ring terminals that big. God, Jerry, if she pees in here, it's your fault. Jerry, you want to be a pal and hand me the Allen wrench set on the other side of the box? Say that again. The Allen yeah, wrench set. Yeah, on the side of the that big area up there. Hand me that album ring setting on the box. I was like, on the other side of the box. Oh my God. It's always that one size that we don't freaking ever have on this. have a quarter inch drive on that. It's even rack mount. We, we can do a little kludgy bit. A little kludgy bit. A little kludgy bit. We could have it on thing. Yeah. And it could, it, yeah. Yeah. We have enough plugs. We have two plugs and four sockets. That's enough to make an interface for this. 
to that, and that to that. I'm pretty happy about that. And you know what the best part is? Mm. Didn't have to spend any money. Mm. It's fiscally responsible. Well, those are nice. That's way more better than, than what it used to be. These, these aren't tight enough. Yeah, they're not. You can tell because it moved. Yeah, when it see, moves, I, it's not tight enough. That. So while you're setting that up, I'm going to... Just plug it in. No, I'm going to set up our dummy load. Plug it in, see if I care. I need these lines. Oh, come on. Crappy old red lines. Crappy old red lineman's pliers. Another one. Because all my good dikes are soft copper only. But those crappy old lineman's pliers, if I shoot them up a little bit, I don't care. Ooh! Bat, bat, Batman. That's, that's like way more better. Batman's tool bag has all the right tools. Yeah? Sorry, Batman was able to satisfy my needs in ways you never did. Where's my Leatherman? Sitting on the uh, high voltage. Right next to the Tesla coil. Over here. Two days I've been working on this and I didn't notice where the low voltage on my side was. Do you have any idea how stupid I feel about that? Uh, yeah, pretty stupid. It's, it's pretty stupid. It's pretty yeah. stupid. It's interesting though how the low voltage size has bigger lugs than the high voltage size. You got quarter twenty for high voltage and like five sixteenths on the doing it backwards and I don't care. Ah. Oh, no. In my hand. Oh, I was thinking I just had him. Jacob's ladder from the get-go. It'll work, Holmes. From the get-go. Santa, don't come to the ghetto, Jesus. This power shit blows up. Or it works. It'll either work or it won't. There's really no middle ground on this. That should give us a nice, basically, a low resistance, dead short. Um, and but it'll the, by doing it with this, it'll kick on and off and off, and we'll get spikes and stuff happening. And we've got resistive ballast. So all right, plug it in, Batman. Let's see if the damn thing works. Oh hey. Uh, Spin this around. Keeps changing, but 
set up around and see what else we get. I'm going to put it back on the mods because I'll bet I get more than 5 amps out of it now. And we shorted the mods. Okay, that man, come here. Yeah, come here. I know it's unplugged. And I turned the variac all the way down. The nice thing I like about that Variac stack is because it's in the metal box, it has a nice hum to it. Mm -hmm. um, find the spade connectors to put on there. You'll want four of these. What's the fuses on the very act right there, three to four? Huh? What's the number on those fuses? 50. 50? Okay, very act's at 50, that's 10 kVA. So I'll trip the breaker in the base. Wait, no, what do you want? The fuses, to be thing. Yeah. What's the number on it? You want 250 volts? No. 50 amps. Okay, so we're 50 amp fuses. We're 10 gave you a good. Weak spot in the line is going to be the breaker in the basement. Which will probably trickle up instantly. Thanks. Here, I'll do one side to do Get some yummies from me. There are only two left. Oh, you dick! Use a big hole, use a big hole! Where's the lease on this one? There isn't. You're committed. I'm committed now. You're a bad man. Give me a 
That's fine. <laughs> it made that sound in my head. I heard the opening to summertime. Oh, sorry. You, do you hear it though? Yeah. There's a song I've thought about in like fucking 20 years. Alright, so Batman's got these shorted. That's our input side. That's our output side. Oh, no. oh, these big ones suck. It's easier to get the wire to get the connection, doesn't it? Watch the numbers, we're on max, clear it out, all right. Do it, Batman! On. I got lots. What do you got now? 2.83. Cool. Where's my stick? Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Whoa! Kill it! Kill it now! Kill it now! Kill it now! We're up to six. Don't look at me and look at the smoke. We let smoke out of the thing. Went up to six amps? Yeah. I got smoke coming out of the low voltage side. I got smoke out the low voltage side. Shit. All right, Jerry, you're on the Variac. Batman, you're on the wall. Variac to zero. Variac to zero. All right. Camera over here. I don't care about the amps now. I care about this. Okay. All right. Variac at zero. Wall hot. Wall hot. Variac to 25. There. What's our amps? 0.34. Okay, you shoot camera here. Here, give, give me the camera. <laughs> you got it? All right. Come up to 50. There. And we immediately start smoking. There. How many amps are we at? I only got up to like one. It's not enough to make it hot. What's the amps? 14. 14 amps? But now no smoke. Take it up to uh, 100. No, take it up to 80. Well, that's exactly where I stopped. All right. Maybe just How many amps? 26.2. Sir, I'm sick. I'm not seeing any more smoke. I've never seen a transformer do that before. Usually, if there's smoke coming out... <laughs> it 
just chunk a mouse in there? Yeah, take it up to full. Yeah, 120, go. What's the amp set now? 42. 42? Come, come down. Okay, stop. Hold it there. 31. You keep coming down. You're going to read out the numbers. When he's down to 25, you tell him to stop. When, I, when, when he gets down to 25 amps, you tell him to stop. You're at 90? Okay, 24, 25 is fine, but you, you don't want to go above 25. Yeah, they're going to melt a little. Don't stare at those. <laughs> <laughs> I got no more smoke coming out of this. Can I have uh, the airline with the blower, please? There's smoke over here. Where? Right there. Oh, stop! We're burning up the mods. Turn it off. <laughs> yeah. That's what that smells like. Yeah, those transformers take 25 amps all day long. Those transformers won't. And I was like, well, the breaker downstairs is 30, so. We'll just hold the 25 and we can do that all day. All right. Yeah, that was, that was a hoot and a holler. So what's the uh, new purpose for this? This? Test core power supply for a little one. All right. What's bigger? Huh. All right, there's a lot of black nasty in there. Let's clean all that out that we can and we'll see how good we can do. Okay. But it works, and you did an amazing job here. This is awesome. Good job. Um, so we've got that, and this is a questionable transformer right now. What I want to do is hook it up. We'll run it off the big stack, and we'll just we'll run it at like I want to warm it up a bit. So it's 10 kVA, so we can pull some pretty serious amperage to it. But we're gonna. I want to run it at, I want to do a one hour burn at a 50% load and see how she does. Because if it's going to smoke, I want it to smoke in here under controlled circumstances. Right. So, but we'll do a one hour burn at a 50% load, see where we're at. If she'll take it, we'll do a 10 minute burn in at 100% load, see how she does. And we'll let it cool and then we'll do a 10 minute burn in at like 120% load. So, all right. Well, cool. That's, you couldn't get it straight? You couldn't? I mean, my, my bandsaw wandered. Apparently so, we may have to redo that because I mean, you're, you're off by an eighth down here, man. That, I'm not very happy. That's, I, if I didn't work like that, man, I'd, I'd like be in a dark room listening to Bright Eyes and cutting myself. By the time I get to actually use the stupid tools that need to be serviced. <laughs> Alright, so that's today's Captain's Blog. Adventures with Transformer, and I'm an idiot. But we figured it out in the end, so cool. This is the second one of these I've owned. I've never hooked one up before today. We just had it sitting around. So. Yeah. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden, and you're not. And that's today's Captain's Blog. We'll see you tomorrow night. Today's Captain's Blog is brought to you by Frank Lawler.